All right, man, check this out. How y'all doing out there? How y'all doing out there? How y'all doing, man? Hope your weekend is good. Hope y'all doing good. Hope y'all doing real good. All right, so this is part two of Drake uh, in the legal situation that he's in. This is getting crazy. Um, in this part, uh, they talk about the gangs and uh, stuff. So before I get into that, you know, I got to get my legendary spill. King of the North. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work on your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy, single ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where the final one's at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, Cash App is in the description. They called me the Hidden Gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to almost 13,000. Will be this week. And I'm trying to reach 50,000 real soon. A million by Monday morning. You know what it means. King of the North, let me know what kingdom you are from. You know what I'm saying? Just let me know the kingdom you're from in the comments. Thank y'all. So look. We're going to get into this real quick. This is part two. I don't know if this is going to come out in the morning. I might release this tomorrow morning. Um, Yeah, I might release this tomorrow morning. So this is the 8 a.m. show. How about that? All right. So um, so let's get to it, man. Let's do it. All right. So look, let's get to it, man. Let's get to it. Let's go. Understanding wanted to call uh, Jesse De La Cruz, who they had claimed, you had claimed, discovered visual evidence that Drake could have had ties to the same of organization as a co-defendant in this case, Robert Allen. And I believe the brief states, Dr. Cruz's research revealed photos of Mr. Graham throwing the same gang signs as Allen. And Allen is that accomplice who I mentioned before who testified against his uh, co-defendants. But Cruz also revealed that people who knew Drake were allegedly seen in XXX Tentacion's neighborhood threatening him before he died. The brief read, social media posts showed these same known Graham associates were seen in Onfroy's neighborhood threatening him just prior to the murder. And then they say even more revealing. Dang. That's crazy. So. <sighs> I'm going to tell y'all something, man. This, this is one thing y'all got to understand about how. How. Everything works. Everything works in unison. Everything works. The universe sees all. Universe does everything. Universal law, although I don't really believe in religion like that, but universal law is you can't escape it. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. You could try to prevent something from happening. It'll just happen. If it's going to happen to you, whether it's good or bad, it's going to happen. And I think that Sometimes we can, we can, uh, how would I say this? We can, we can see the steps that we're making that will either lead to our demise much faster than would usually would be. And I think Drake being the narcissistic person he is, I believe that the steps that he'd been taking throughout his career, I think that he became somebody that doesn't care about the consequences because he never faced it. This is why he's taken this law so tough because he's never been on his back before. You know what I'm saying? Like he's never been put down, boom, put down. So I think what Kendrick did to him was humbled him. But at the same time, he never learned from this experience because he feels as though that it's gotta be a trick of why this happened to him. This can't be real. So this whole thing with people being in ex Tetashion's neighborhood and, and threatening him kind of goes back to what X was saying online when he was saying that if if something happened to me, you just know Drake did it. So <clears throat> maybe this is this is where this is the beginning of the end, I would say, for this guy. I don't see how he can come back from this. I'm being honest with y'all. Is this connection that Cruz made to Drake's song lyrics? Because shortly after XXX was killed, they, uh, the brief writes, Mr. Graham released a song entitled Triple X with suspicious lyrics. SMS, Triple X, that's the only time I shot below the neck. And Dr. That's crazy, yo. That's crazy. That's crazy. You you get the, you, I ain't gonna say, just allegedly. Something, you had something to do with this man getting killed or his murder. 
and you do a song about it. But you're not from the streets. This is the crazy thing about it. And I'm telling you, man, all these dudes know. They all know. But they don't say nothing. They all know. Because in our, within, within our culture, snitching isn't allowed. It's not allowed. Even if someone kills someone's mother, it's not allowed. So people like him, he get away with it and he can rap about it in songs and still be on top. Now, I'm not saying people got to advocate to go do something or, or tell. I'm just saying, like, how could you live with yourself if that happened? You know what I'm saying? I just don't understand it. But this dude, man, this dude is a piece of work. I'm telling y'all. I've been saying this about him. I don't know why. I guess people starting to listen now. Cruz found another connection between the murder and Drake's lyrics in the song I'm Upset. The song I'm Upset contains lyrics regarding Louis bags for body bags. The implication there being that Drake was referencing murder. Uh, but ultimately, Cruz was completely excluded from the trial and the jury did not hear any of his findings. Mauricio, I have that right. And, and can you walk, be a, can you emphasize that a little bit more? Can you explain that a little bit more? Yes. Okay. So, um, Dr. Dela Cruz offer to the court everything that you've stated regarding the song lyrics um the fact that that uh, drake was throwing gang signs that were the same gang signs that alan was throwing up and in, in in different social media posts um the the court strikes now i want y'all to understand something man i believe there's a law in cali maybe around the united states but i know in california gang king association gang affiliation if if you get arrested and the police, you know, pull up your arm, pull up your uh your shirt, and then you got a gang gang anything, you tied to that. You go you're you're going you're going to jail doing it. Even if you had nothing to do with it. If you were just there and you have gang you know, I believe it's gang I believe they have a law it's gang affiliation or gang ties or something like that. So when this guy Drake is throwing up signs and and rapping about it in his lyrics and his songs and stuff like that. What y'all think, you know what I'm saying? What y'all think's gonna happen? What y'all think's gonna happen? You know, it's gonna get traced back to you. And I know in Canada, they don't have freedom of speech. I know here they do. Maybe that's the way you can get away with it, but I don't know. Dr. De La Cruz, which is a known gang expert and well-known in his field, has testified over 150 times in trials. They allowed the state to put their own gang expert, Detective Polo, uh, which, which really bolstered a lot of what Dr. De La Cruz said uh, regarding the necessity to, to, you know, to bring out this testimony. Um, I don't believe that it, based on Daubert, which is the, the, the case that we look at when, when analyzing whether an expert is, uh, it's, if it's appropriate for an expert to testify, I don't believe that that was a legal call. Uh, I think it was error for him to do that and not allow us to put forth that testimony. Um, and we we put up pictures of Drake with Lil Wayne throwing up a, a Bloods gang sign and other other um, uh, evidence that Drake is out there flaunting gang ties. We put forth evidence of Hassan Ali, which is top five out there openly claiming on uh, on social media uh, in video that he's um, uh, that he's Drake shooter. And part of the theory of defense is man, they, bro, I'm going to tell you right now, they on this dude, they on him. He, 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 ka, 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 laughing and all this, man, I'm telling you, man, everybody tries and they all fail. Everybody tries and they all fail. When it comes to the music industry, you got to understand and I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say that this is because this case happened before, but the powers that be, man, I'm telling you, they can pull strings. And next thing you know, they're investigating you. And if this guy is telling people that they're his shooter and then you got uh, songs bragging about or saying things that's close about the murder and then you turn around and you got a song called Mob Tides where you talking about bro it's so crazy because eventually all this stuff is going to culminate into one thing and it's going to end up collapsing 
I could see that happening. And then, and we ain't even get into the uh, the PDF uh, allegations or nothing like that yet. This is criminal activity. You know what I'm saying? So people might think that you know it's it's uh people might think that it's uh why would I say this? It's just one of those things where they kind of brush it off, like nah, because what happens is eventually all of this stuff, they're going to start looking into everything. They're going to start looking into everything. If you, if you taking out a petition or you are trying to take down somebody, trust to believe they got their own investigators to look into you. And all they need is to find one thing and that'll mess your whole career up. His career is already messed up. I think that he, I think he, he, he had the wrong people advising him. He should have just sat back and did nothing. You know what I'm saying? He would have been fine, honestly. He, he still had, you know, he still has uh, his catalog. But I think that he just, he he started, he started thinking he was bigger than the game. And I got a video coming up, Joe Button's talking about some, they should pay him. No, they shouldn't pay him. No, they should not pay him. But I'll talk about that on the other video. The show, listen, even though these people are entertainers, okay, there's there's a you know a gang related portion of it there's a gang related side to it and um x's own mother testified that she knew about this that she knew about when 600 breezy uh, uh traveled from wherever he was whether it's chicago to south florida she knew about it she talked to him about it so this case had more than ample evidence and ample reason to involve a gang expert to, to be clear, though, you were allowed to argue that someone else could have been responsible for this killing because you questioned, cross-examined Allen uh, on cross-examination, suggesting that he had this link to Drake. But my understanding is you're arguing now that the trial court had put limits on your cross-examination of Allen, that that violated your client's rights. Am I misunderstanding that? No, you're you're 100 percent correct. But and they, they did it not only with Allen, but they did it all throughout the trial. Okay. With Allen, Allen admitted that his father, known drug dealer, known known firearms dealer, as the brief states, um, prov produced at least one of the guns that was used in this. When I asked him about his father and ties to Toronto and drug dealing, the state objected, and the and the that question. So it was a constant battle for me to try and. And, and basically do my job and show where reasonable doubt existed. Um, with Allen, with Detective Curcio, the, I mean, the, the problem here is also is that the state attorney on direct of the lead of Detective Curcio, which was the, the lead detective in the case, she asked, do you have any information that Drake was involved in this? And that was before the court struck him. So whatever the reasons may have existed, the moment that the state attorney opens up their mouth and, and says that, now, now he's really at issue because now the, you're opening the, the, the door. You're opening the door to that coming yes, in. Yes, yes. And um, not only was it an issue of of her her mentioning it with Detective Curcio, but she asked him, "You you actually were able to verify whether or not Drake was in South Florida at the time?" So in cross examination, I asked, "What? Why would you have to verify if he was if he was in South Florida? Why? Because he's a person of interest." And then I had to further ask. Well, Did you see how like, and and it's really that. I mean, it has something to do with Drake, but it's so much more than that. But you see how the elite people or people with money, you see how they get treated differently. Now, what I was saying before was, these guys ain't trying to go to prison for the rest of their life. Trust and believe. Even though they did the murder, or we allegedly, because we couldn't really see their face. I mean, some of them admitted to it, but. I guess they was going to try to get a lesser sentence. I don't know. But as far as Drake goes, it's all on the table. These dudes are going to tell. They're going to say it. And guess what? It, they're going to find out whether he's connected to this or not. They're going to find out. And I'm telling y'all now, from my feeling, from what I'm seeing, and from what X was saying, I definitely think he's connected to this. I definitely do. What did you do to, and I'm paraphrasing, what did you do to, to, you know, figure out whether he was in South Florida? He says, oh, my partner checked social media. 
So then I said, okay, so in a homicide ca case, the best that Broward Sh Sheriff's Office has for a jury is to peep his Instagram. You know, so it was basically breaking down the poor job that, that BSO did in their investigation and the tunnel vision that they had, and the fact that none of this was in the report. So you felt it important enough to check and verify whether or not he was in South Florida, but you never memorialized it in your report, and I'm not allowed to ask about it. Well, did, did he, he also testify, uh, Detective Curcio, that he learned that Onfroy... Yeah, like, so I don't understand why. If he was, if, if, the, if they said he's a person of interest and then this guy wants to, I guess, uh, cross-examine him about it, but then you'd say, you can't use it. I don't understand what's going on. Like, why, 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 why you can't use it? If, if, if they saying that he was a person of interest, the guy, the guy X was saying that he was going to have something done to him. If something happens to me, it's Drake. He's clearly a person of interest because the guy who got killed said this on camera. He literally said, if I, something happens to me, it's Drake. So something must have been happening to that point. Like, I don't understand why why they don't get that part. I don't understand why they don't get that part. Maybe I'm lost. I don't know. XXX had been attacked by members of Migos, right? Migos is the rap group that's associated with Drake. Was that that came in? And, and again, you weren't able yeah. to expand upon that? Not only did that come in, but when I asked him during, in cross-examination, isn't it true that the first time that the name Migos comes out in this case, was a month after the murder in the first conversation that you yourself had with the cooperating co-defendant, Allen. He didn't remember, I had to refresh his recollection, and right there in the, in the, in the, in the, in the transcribed uh, conversation, it basically showed that Allen, the, 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 the cooperator, said the name Migos in the first conversation that they had. So it, it basically showed that I wasn't making this up. Like it's not, I'm not creating it. The facts were there before I even ever alleged their involvement or filed a motion in court. Um, they're, they're, they're checking to see whether or not Drake is in South Florida. That was years before I mentioned it. And Alan is saying that, that is talking about Migos to the lead detective a month after the murder. This is years. Now, now I see, now, now I see exactly why Kendrick said that before he could make a truce, he taken the rip. I can see exactly why now. Because when he said in the song, that if that money falls in the hand of a crash dummy, jeopardize my family and the ones that love me. But like, bro, these dudes are crash dummies. They're crash out, crash out kids. That's what they are. They're crash out kids. And Drake knows that. He gives them a few, 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 few dollars. They don't say nothing. They do something. And then they get caught. They get caught, and now they're going to prison for the rest of their life. And then Drake, he gets to sit back and laugh and lamp and do whatever he wants. Like, what? Like, I don't know if he thinks he's living this mafioso real-life movie or something. I, I don't get it. But these dudes are crash-out kids. He's hiring a lot of these crash-out kids to do something for him. It's crazy. And I'll, and I'll be honest with y'all. I don't think this is the only one. It could be others. And... There's there's guys on online right now. Well, there wasn't one guy. He was saying how he went to Drake's house about his stuff, and then they jumped him, beat him real bad, put him in the hospital, and he never said or pressed charges or did anything. Like what? Like, I don't, oh man, I think I did a video about that too. Before I filed anything regarding my theory of defense, so it was just to show that this is part of the case. Right. And you and the argument is, is that your client didn't get a fair shake, didn't get a fair trial because you couldn't expand upon this and introduce this. Introduce this. I want to move quickly past Drake and ask you a couple different questions about this appeal. Uh, sp uh, speaking about Detective Curcio, I understand that there's also an objection that um, your team has with him providing opinion testimony on cell phone data. Can you talk about that real quick, what the issue was with Detective Curcio there? Okay, well, the issue is, is that... Um uh, Broward County did not list uh, a, a forensic expert, okay? And they tried to put forth expert testimony through someone by the name of Camvani and, and through Detective Curcio, and the court allowed them to give expert opinion as to locations of cell phones and things that are specifically um, left 
to experts because when you list somebody as an expert, then that opens up the doors to, dis to discovery that we can take and take uh, depositions of them and put us on notice to the specific um, details that they're gonna um, testify to as an expert. That didn't happen in this case. Yo, that's crazy. Yo, so you had, you didn't have an, an expert come out. You allowed these people to give their opinion on something, not an expert about these about uh, G uh gps cell phone locations the geo fence and all this stuff i can't believe that that's crazy like <laughs> like you didn't allow an expert to come in why oh that's right because if you allow an expert to come in now you can open up discovery now and they can actually get more information and you didn't want that whatever whoever's running the show here they definitely didn't want that that's cr yo this is crazy. Uh, and what they allowed was this ind individual named named uh, Campani. They allowed him uh, to basically put forth expert testimony, and he put forth um, like a like a, a, a visual aid that he had prepared a week prior to his testimony. Okay, we were ambushed with it, and there he basically put you know little dots where he where he testified where the cell phones were exactly, and they allowed Detective Curcio. To if your dad is still in the to write to also give that type of, 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 of testimony. Now, Detective Curcio is extremely experienced. I'm not going to take that away from him. And 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 this individual campaign as, as well. But just because you're experienced doesn't um, take away the obligation of Broward County to do things correctly. This is a murder case and a high profile one at that. There's a number of different other points that are raised uh, in this appeal. Uh, there's things like allowing prior bad acts to come into this trial allowing an out-of-court statement from defendant Newsom, which you argue was prejudice, which uh, his uh, Williams defense attorneys are saying was prejudicial. Bro, what you crying for? Why you crying? Ain't it, bro, you did, you one of the crash out kids. What you crying for, bro? No point of that. I don't get it. Really, really no point. If you can, what what's another big area of appeal is it any of those two that you really think could be problematic why your client well, I, again again I, I i guess the idea is he deserves a new trial right yes yeah yes and and th those th the two things that you mentioned are pretty egregious the one of the newsome is is really shocking like they basically um on redirect of detective curcio asked asked them questions and brought in a hearsay statement regarding a completely separate murder investigation that he that he says that he found without authenticating the cell phone and basically said that Newsom had told somebody in some dating app or something that he had buried money in his house and so the the judge buried money he could be catching life and a really uh, incriminating statement but Detective Curcio didn't have to authenticate that. They didn't have to show what cell phone it came from. Basically, he just said, I saw this in another case. And the problem is, is that my, my, my client is sitting at the same table with this individual that now the court has allowed this, you know, extremely prejudicial information to come in. So that was a humongous reversible area, error, in my opinion. That I'm be honest with y'all. I don't know why them dudes are wearing suits. You ain't getting off. You ain't gonna get less time. Oh, this is just for you to impress the judge. Wear this suit so the judge could be like, it. "No, bro, you just you murdered somebody in cold blood, bro. Don't even, don't even be stupid. You might as well come in there with regular clothes on. It's no point of you trying to act moral, uh, moral now. Like you dudes are wild, bro. The crash out kids. I'm telling you, that's what they be using. These crash out kids." They use them. It's kind of like how it is in these third world countries in a way where some of them, these uh, top guys be using kids to do certain things. They do the same thing here, man. It's just the, just the kids are a little older, but they're still children, still kids, 19, 20, 21, 22. They're scratch out kids. Affected not only my client's case, but everybody that was sitting there at a table, including all the co-defendants. Moving forward, though, what can we expect in terms of a timeline of appeal? When will this be heard? When will this be decided? If a new trial is granted, how does that work? Because now, we, now it's about uh, the timeline of events. What, what should we yeah. expect? I, you know what? I, I don't. I don't practice appellate law, and those are questions that I don't really want to give misleading answers to. Okay. 
Fair um, so, so I, I'm not. I don't want to give uh, the wrong answers uh, regarding appellate. I don't really do do appellate law, but but at some point they're going to file a responsive ble uh, brief, um, and uh, I think that the court could invite. Uh, I think the way it is nowadays, the court can invite uh, oral argument. When before, when I first started practicing law, you had the right to to, to give oral argument. I think now it's only by invitation when the when the appellate court wants to hear your arguments. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen, uh, when I read this. What, this was an 11 week trial. The jury was out eight days. It's not like if it's not like if the jury didn't think about it and it came back in 90 minutes and, and, and convicted our client. The jury struggled. They had to have struggled because eight days is I've never had a case that, that the jury's been out that long. And uh, and it was clear that they had questions. And I really wasn't able to properly defend my client. Mr. Williams did not get a fair trial. When I read this, I think there's like, a, like some kind of a defense mechanism when you try a case for 11 weeks that you f start forgetting things. When I read this, it brought it all back and it, it, you know, it reminded me of really how unfair, unfair the judge was uh, with Mr. Williams and, and the detrimental effects that it had for me to be able to properly defend my client. Listen. All right, so that's it right there, man. Um, and you, heard it, you heard it from the horse's mouth. All right, so he back. Yeah, man. So we don't know when this is going to happen. We don't know when this is going to take place. But if this is just another another uh, landmine that's in Drake's way and uh, he don't know where this one's planted at. And I'm sure if this one comes up, there's going to be other ones. Mark my words. You, this week, y'all going to be hearing some new stuff. Trust and believe. And once the floodgates open, it's over because he ain't get to the women yet. Once if one woman claims that he did something, and then another one come come forth, the embassy's gonna get raided. It's only a matter of time. That's how it goes. All right, man. Look, that was part two. Thank y'all for watching, man. I appreciate y'all. Let me know what kingdom you're from, too, man. You know, real king up in here, baby. All right, see y'all. Have yourself a good, good, good day. Oh, you some leftovers, baby. Yeah. 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 Boo.